Good whatever time of day it is that you are watching this. I am Phil Gamesh. I have a comic book haul that I've been sitting on for quite a while, so I figured what better time to do it than uh, when my voice hurts after singing at the top of my lungs. Am I making that up? Maybe. You'll never know. All right, so this is um, a couple of hauls from two different comic book stores where uh, one of them was like half off of back issues and the other one was... Uh, well, it ended up, for me, being like 44% off of back issues, something like that. Because it was like 40% off, and then I had another thing with like an additional 10% off of that, so I figure 10% of 40 is 4, so 44%. <clears throat> Math. That's what everybody comes to YouTube for. All right. So uh, this first batch of books is from the uh, store where I got everything half off. All right, um, this is my actually second copy of this book, Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, number one. Um, this is the first appearance of Firestar in comics. She debuted on that Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends cartoon series back in, what, the 70s? Must have been the 70s. Maybe 1980 at the latest? That's a guess. I don't know. I didn't look it up. Um... But yeah, I have another copy that's in rougher shape than this. This one's still, eh, you know, could still stand to upgrade. It's It's got some tanning along the bottom and um, I don't know, kind of the pages are a little bit um, more off-white than I would prefer. But, you know, whatever, it was cheap. So there's that. Um, and then this next batch of books I got like in a set. So Mephisto, the Mephisto versus miniseries that came out in uh, whenever. Um, oh, hang on. It actually says on the cover, it looks like uh, 19, 1987. Man, $1.50 cover price in 1987. That's unheard of. I wonder why they did that. Um, Anyway, yeah, I got this entire set for five bucks. So, Mephisto versus the Fantastic Four. Mephisto versus the, wait a minute, the X-Factor? Mephisto versus the X-Men. That makes more sense. And, ooh. It's Rogue's Lucky Day. <laughs> and Mephisto versus the Avengers. And it looks like it's Thor's Lucky Day. Mephisto, Mephisto plays for both teams. All right. And then this next, I also got this miniseries as a set for like six bucks. So, Magic. The Magic miniseries, number one. Uh, and you know, like these old miniseries from the 80s, at some point they're probably going to uh, spike on the aftermarket because these things always tend to do that. Right? It'll just be some random thing. Jonathan Hickman will use something from this miniseries in his X-Men run, and all of a sudden, magic number two here will be worth 15 bucks. <laughs> Which is nothing to write home about, but, you know, whatever. Um, so, yeah, number two. Number three. With uh, Storm on the cover looking fairly ancient. And number four, with, I think that's, uh, it says in the corner down here, Tom Palmer. So I'm guessing he did the cover, but it really looks like Brett Blevins to me. But I don't know, this may have been before his time. It was like 82 or something like that. This miniseries came out, 83, I don't know, something like that. But anyway, there's that, it's cool. Um... I got some Hobgoblin issues of The Amazing Spider-Man, number 260. And this is especially cool. The one with the Charles Vest cover, number 261. Man, it would be cool to see Charles Vest come back and do something. I don't know what he's doing these days. Probably commercial advertising artwork, something like that. 
That's probably where the money is. Unless you're Archerm. Um, nothing particularly special about this uh, Tomb of Dracula issue. Number 23. Just, you know, kind of cool. Just working on that run. Um, I wanted to get a nice uh, issue that was in shape. And then it wasn't until later that I noticed that the corner down here has kind of a ding taken out of it. A little chip. But, um... Eh, you know, whatever. Not like it was pricey. $4.50. Also, always working on the Jack Kirby Fourth World stuff. Whenever I can find that at a decent price. Or, uh, you know, the major keys, if I can find them for under 100 bucks, I can go for it. I already got my first appearance of Dark Side. Definitely need uh, the first issues of Mr. Miracle, New Gods, and the Forever People, though. Um, okay, and then another Bronze Age issue that's in good shape. Ms. Marvel number 10. Again, just a run filler, but you know, still kind of cool. All right, so those were all the books that I got from that store. And these uh, next ones are were the, what, like 44% off. And, and these are all really cheap. I don't think I paid more than five bucks for any of these issues. And a lot of them were under, most of them were under three bucks. A lot of them were under like a dollar even. So, um, Spectacular Spider-Man number 158. Spider-Man gets the what is it, Captain Universe Powers? Something like that. Um, and this one I thought was pretty cool. It's in really nice shape. Uh, Captain America number 200. Speaking of Jack Kirby. When he came back to Marvel and did a run on Captain America. And then a little later from the Mark Grunewald run. Oof, say that one fast. Uh, Captain America number 333. Where, I, uh, this might be the issue where John Walker becomes Captain America. And then number 335, also from that run. I had to rebag and board this one because the bag wasn't very good, but it's in good condition. The book is. All right, and then found a copy of West Coast Avengers number 46. Um, first appearance of the Great Lakes Avengers. And the West Coast Avengers uh, issue one from the miniseries that which which is the first appearance of the West Coast Avengers. All right. Found a an issue out of the John Byrne She-Hulk run. Sensational She-Hulk number seven. Really kind of wish they would bring back this iteration of the character. And this one is cool. I, I saw this just um, looking through the boxes. Iron Man number 232. Apparently this is the um, um, epilogue to the, what, the Armor Wars storyline. But yeah, Barry Windsor Smith cover and interiors. I saw that and I was like, whoa, I didn't know Barry Windsor Smith did an issue of Iron Man. So I had to grab that. Um, super happy to find this book. The Mighty Thor, number 344. The first appearance of Malekith. This book kind of fluctuates in price, but... Uh, I actually probably did pay more than five bucks for this, but not much more. All right. Classic Walt Simonson run. Okay. Um, this was kind of a cool find as well. Fire, The Fury of Firestorm, The Nuclear Man, number 24, the first appearance of Blue Devil. Um... <laughs> This is another one of those where I thought, you know, it was in really great condition and then I get it home and I notice it has like a nice little hole 
in the cover, a little focus. I showed it to another friend of mine who was like, oh, that's just like a, a printer error where they had like these claws that would come down and grab the book and pull them or something like that. Um, I don't know. I've never seen the one that high up before, so I don't know if that's what that is or if that's something else. Um, otherwise, it's in good shape. I'm um, still working on this Ghost Rider run. Almost finished with it, in fact. Ghost Rider number 11. Again, just a run filler, but... Um, cool one. Is that a Larry Stroman cover? Let's see. Take a look at this. Yep, it sure is. I didn't know Larry Stroman did Ghost Rider. From his original series, Moon Knight number 2. And it's kind of hard to tell whether that's a Bill Sienkiewicz cover or not. I mean, it doesn't look like his classic style, but I know he was... I think he did the first issue of Moon Knight, and I know he did a bunch of others, so this might be him. It probably is. It kind of... Yeah, maybe. It kind of looks like his New Mutant stuff a little bit. Anyway. Um, yeah, this one I thought was really cool. It's in gorgeous condition. Conan the Barbarian, number 100. With the death of Belit. Spoilers. But yeah, and it's a... It's, um, like a square bound comic. It's in really nice shape. Apparently a direct edition. It's got the marks of the barcode. I don't know which, whether the direct editions or the new stand editions were more um, prevalent when this came out. Mm, let me see, take a look at the date on the cover. 1979. Mm. I don't know. I want to say there were probably more newsstand copies back then. I don't think it was until the early 80s that the direct market started to eclipse it. Anyway, this is a, a lucky find since this book has been kind of blowing up on the back issue market. Thor, God of Thunder, number two. First appearance of Gore, the God Butcher. And picked up the Greg Capullo cover for Detective Comics number 1000. This is one of the ones that I meant to get when it first came out, and I just didn't get around to it. Um, but I got it now. Now I'm mostly just searching for the aftermarket Detective covers. All right. Batgirl number three from the New 52, Adam Hughes cover. I'm trying to get issues one through six of this, and I think I, don't know, I might still be missing an issue, but I think I might have all of them. I don't, I don't know. I'd have to look. Um, from the Hush storyline, Batman number 619, Jim Lee. I think there's multiple covers of on uh, on this issue, and... This is like the villain's cover or something like that. I may be wrong. I may be thinking of a different issue, but I think that's right. Um, Convergence Superman number two. Uh, it says right there on the uh, sticker on the cover, first John Kent. Superman and Lois Lane's son, the current, I guess, Superboy. And... So yeah, this is actually my second copy of that too. Um, I found another one at a store where they had like, I want to say five or six copies and they were all like really dinged up. So I grabbed the best one and um, I think I paid cover price for it. Maybe a little bit less. But um, it's still, you know, I'm glad to find a copy that's actually in near mint condition. All right. And final book. This, one, this one's been uh, getting a lot of heat lately as well. A-Force number one. The first appearance of the all-female Avengers. 
Um, got it really cheap. That's very cool. So yeah, that is my haul. Um, as Mercenot would say, I'm sticking to it. And um, feel free to let me know what you think. Did I did I get a good deal on any of these books, or did I <laughs> pay too much for the ones that I didn't notice were damaged? Uh, let me know in the comments. And um, yeah, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Do it. See you in the next video.